Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here, What I Picks Daily, welcome back. Okay, we've got a A1278, it's come in, it's not powering up, it was sort of intermittently powering up, and now it's completely stopped powering up. So, yeah, we've got your pretty normal sort of um, activity on the board that you get from any of the machines that are this old, unless they're sort of kept in isolation chambers. So, the battery's off. I think we'll probably check around the bottom edge here. That's a fairly typical area. I suppose we should try to mag safe on it just to confirm what we're thinking. Get the original mag safe one. Hopefully we can have a win here. Person would like to get their machine up and running and their good old A1278. So okay, so we've got a green light. Let's see, here we go for power up. And pressing the on off button does not entail any activity. So we must have 3G42, probably got SMC, but we're not getting any activity. Alright, so this isn't going to be a dead simple, it's going to require a little bit of thinking. Yep, 2936. Alrighty, let's have a look around the board. Where's our toothbrush? Alright, so we can already see we've got fairly traditional bottom edge issues. Let's see what corrosion down here. Let's see, those three parts there could be problematic. Oh, we've got a nice chunk of corrosion there. Now, I think at this point our best course of action will be we'll clear out these bottom parts. I'm going to take the board out because m most likely when these guys are all upset then on the other side there's often something that's corroded as well. A little bit of dust build up there. A little dust bunnies. They would have kept it a little bit warm. That's okay. That's very normal. At least on MacBooks, it's a lot easier to get to them, unlike a great majority of PC laptops. I did a PC laptop the other day that almost needed me to take the screen off just to get to the fan. It was a joke. It wasn't quite that bad, but it certainly wasn't far off. And make sure you do this smoothly, you don't want to go puncturing those flexes. There we go. I do get a few machines in here at times where someone's used a pair of tweezers to get them off but they poke them like this when they're trying to get them out rather than an even distribution on the flex and it punctures through the flex resulting in intermittent issues afterwards particularly if it's something like a keyboard flex coming straight off the keyboard you really don't want to be replacing the keyboard these ones can get a little bit tricky to get out and of course you've got to be careful with the camera. The camera is a very easy one for it to get damaged. It's very tempting to pull the cable. I mean, once you've released it a bit you can so grab the cable small amount of tension and you wiggle it. There we go. Always good to get a good feel of what it should take to get a board out rather than forcing it. Okay, we do have to get the microphone out still. Actually I might just take the ba take the battery out. As usual with almost all of these the tri wing drive hold is already broken. I'm using an iPhone 7 tri-wing driver here, that's a bit of an underkill. Come on, there we go. Alright, focus back on this, and like I said we've got to get the microphone out. 
This is the part I hate the most. Where's worry I'm gonna do damage. There we got that one out good. Alright, we got the board out. Let's give it a bit of a brush down before we start looking at it. Just get the dust bunnies off. And yep, this is why it's good to take the board off if you've got damage in that area. You can see all this here. That corrosion. So that's going to need cleaning up. Uh, there. Uh, clock circuit. It's slightly tainted. It shouldn't be too bad, but again, always good to clean it up. Well, what we'll do is we'll flux and boil this area, and then we'll work on the other side, the SMC side. There's a bit of junk up in here too. Uh, you probably will get handled once you go through the ultrasonic. Get some fizzing going on there. That's what you want to see. So when you know your flux is doing its job, chewing away at that corrosion. This RTC clock circuit, that's actually redundant, but anyway, this clock circuit area needs to be kept pretty clean too. On the MacBook Airs, it's a notoriously bad area for giving issues. And I do get a number of them where they fail on this 3v3 line. Alright, let's have a look at the SMC area. I say this big cap here was pretty beaten. Have a look at what that is. Pretty sure that's you. Alright, you're the... You're still Thunderbolt. I'm pretty sure. Now, our main concerns originally were these three parts down here. A lot of this stuff can take a fair bit of corrosion, but there is certainly a threshold whereby after which it can probably cause, like this here, see that how it's gone that grey right down on the pad as well. Now there could be corrosion under the SMC so we may have to reflow that. So you know if I had to pick something that there would be a bit of trouble in this one a close second and you're a third though you look like you actually look like you've cleaned up. But this cap here, let's see what that is. What are you? SMC VCL. Not exactly sure what VCL is. And this resistor here, what are you? You're a pull down and SMC MD1. That's a mode selector. And you should be 10k. I'm just going to test that. Let's see what value we get. We get 9.9, .9, so that's acceptable. It may be an SMC issue yet, so hopefully it's not, but I guess we'll see. Wait a minute, I forgot to, forgot to check my voltage on that. Let's see if we're running it. 1256 or uh, they've come back to life. Uh, no. Pretty sure that caps are gonna. So we'll get that replaced. That'd seem okay, but then that could have been from me working on. Just fluff them up. There we go, fluffy pads. Alright, well, that cap did get knocked off pretty easy. Um, not so sure it would have been really the main problem because that's a fairly generic cap. It's, uh, mind you it is actually, sorry, it is a dedicated on its own so yeah, changing my mind on that. I'll take that back. Alright, we've got ourselves our donor 2936 which interestingly is also missing that cap. Okay. Fantastic. The cap for that is a 0.47 microfarad, 6.3 volts, and it's a 402 size. 
No, I couldn't find any on the boards at the moment, but I do have some new replacements. The only thing is, these are 16 volt rated, and I only need 6.3, but that's okay. The fun thing there was that on the packaging, it's listed as 470 nanofarad, which is 0.47 microfarad, but just with a different sort of units multiplier. But when you're in a rush running around looking for these things, you get a bit blind sometimes and you go, I don't have any 0.47s. And then you realize it's staring right at, right at you. All right, let's get this one down. Marbles. Alright, let's try put a fan and mag safe on and see if we can get a fan spin. We got power, we got power. Oh, there we go. No fan spin. Alrighty. So we'll check 3v42 and we will. Check. Oh, we know we've got 3v42. Uh, G3 hot is what I was meaning. 12.6, uh, so we do have SMC. So our SMC on off L is 3.4, we're good. Let's see what our PM sleep S4L is. No, yeah, we don't have S4L. Okay, that's bad news. Does it think that it's asleep? We've got SMC lid, which means it is all good. As much as I wanted to avoid it at this stage, it probably wouldn't hurt to pull that SMC, given the degree of corrosion that was down here. I guess it was an inevitable outcome. Oh well. Okay, let's go for SMC removal. Still, we'll give it a go. There we got ourselves a nice clean SMC pad set. Let's go rebuild the SMC. Alright, first thing we do is put some leaded solder down so that it's a bit easier all up. Now this all comes off, but it just makes it easiest, makes it easy to clean up the old pads, so we don't get any dry spots or anything like that. Uh, looks pretty good. Now we hot air wick off the old stuff. And this leaves us with a nice clean starting surface for our reballing. Oop. So we're out of control already. Oh, then you go. Alright, it's looking good. One thing I found doing the SMCs is like this is I've really got to take them out of the little holder here and wash down that holder. Otherwise, it will boil up and out and cause issues. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it just has to get rid of the bulk of the junk. There's already enough actually resting on the other side of the chip. Okay, it looks like I missed three there. But I think we can get away with it. You still see those flux on that. Now the trouble with the having the flux there is when it heats up, it pushes up. 
And that's when your balls float off. Okay, let's have a look at our stencil. A few strays in there. I'll knock them out. Because they never get knocked out, you've got to brush them out. That's good. Yeah, let's get our paste. Maybe this time I can do a reasonable dry paste mix. It looks fairly crumbly and like clay, so it's a good start. It's not running everywhere, so that's good. You do have to sort of smush it into the holes. You can't just swipe it over the holes. The stencil is moving around, but that's okay. Because of the paste that's already in the holes, it sort of... It takes the SMC with it. So we're not actually smearing the paste across holes. Uh, now I've got to rotate this around. Gently. It's not a big problem if there's a bit of smearing here in terms of on the surface. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Alright, we now commence our slow roast. Now what's happening here is we're heating up everything around like the actual plastic fiber board holder itself, the stencil, the chip. You try to want to keep it fairly even. If you hit it aggressively you'll buckle the uh, the stencil and if you buckle the stencil then the little micro balls that make up the paste will tend to flow out before everything's ready. It'll actually weep underneath between the stencil and the chip. So you really don't want that. Okay, that bottom bottom left ball there is probably going to be a wee shy on size, but well, well, we'll see how it goes. If it needs to be bumped up a little bit, we can do that later. Everything else looks pretty good, so it's not worth ruining everything else for that one ball. Okay, we should be getting to the point soon where it's about ready to roll. Notice how the paste is staying in the holes pretty good. It's not bobbling out or anything. So that's the whole upside of the whole uh, dry paste method. Okay, now we're starting to, but it's only happening just as the balls are ready to form. Uh, the pop-outs are normal, because there's no pads under there. Just give it a few more seconds, that gives a chance for everything to sit down and get a grip. Alright, we're good. Alright, it should be cool enough now. The ball's all solid. Now we can see if we can push it out. There we go. Sometimes we lose a ball here, if they didn't properly bind. How do we get it? Yeah, we did good. That one's fixed. <laughs> okay, give it a bit more flux. And reflow them all. Now by fluxing and reflowing at this stage, what we're doing is it just helps pick up any little dregs. Like you can see down here, that's actually a bit of a big dreg. Little bits of solder balls, solder paste that didn't manage to reflow in the process. We can go a fair bit harder on this. And they should just gloss over there like that. Hold on. 
The same thing is, we're doing all this and we don't even know if it's actually going to fix anything. For all we know, the SMC is dead. And we're just doing it for nothing. Okay. Alright, it's cool enough now. I try not to hit it with the alcohol while it's still boiling hot. Like, I don't want the alcohol fizzing completely off. It's a bit too much shock for the poor chip. Sometimes happens, but it's nice to avoid it if you can. A little bit of flux. Not too much. Because everything is quite fresh and clean, we don't need quite as much flux to cut through any sort of oxidization. Because we've already got ourselves a very clean setup. Okay. Oops. I know some people like to push down and wiggle, but I prefer to let the flux cool off a little bit and then lift it up to the edge and have a look. Yep, that's pretty much perfect. Now I've got a bad habit of chickening out with reflowing these. It'll start to... Your perception of time when you're doing something that needs to be stopped at a particular time can be a bit funny. And you start counting one second as two seconds and you think, I've been on it for too long and you're worried about cooking things and you never quite get to the reflow jump point or you get misled and you think you see a jump but it actually hasn't there we go so that's what we're really looking for and then it should dance around okay yeah just notice that cap's got a bit of a chip out of it I don't think it's a problem, but it's just interesting that I noticed it. Green light. Boo. No fan spin. Okay, let's check RTC G3 hot. Look, it's that one there. 3.3. Pretty sure it's that one. Yeah, 3.3. We're good. Let's see if we can get our clock out. It's one of the ones we can measure on here. And we are getting 32 kilohertz, so the clock is up and running. Alright, we'll stick this in the ultrasonic and see how we go. Alright, next step of the process, we're going to go through and do some diode mode checks. I want to see if the BIOS, SPR BIOS is all good. Just, you know, generally run around see if I can find anything that might be glaringly out of place. Good thing is, I actually have a proper full... Uh, test comparison board. We fixed this one up the other night. And it's also a 2936. So it's very handy having comparison boards. Okay. So this is the reference. This is the unknown. So let's see that multimeter is out of range. There we go. Good enough. Helps if you pick the diode mode. Five four, six three, five five, open. Five four, yeah, six three, yeah, it's close enough. Okay, already a big point one four six was this one was open, was it? Nope, it just wasn't reading. Okay, what have we got? Yeah, that's ground. 638, 526. 6, 63, 526. Mm, it's a little high. Yeah. Okay, overall the values are... Oh, yeah, okay. So they're not too far off. 
with him what I would consider a tolerance level. No, do, do, do. Right, well, that was my bars testing. <laughs> Alright, we're after PB bus S5 HS computing. Should be first thing down here on top of this great big non existent pad. Twelve point five eight. Okay, that's good. PPVAS five. PPVAS S five HS other current sense, which should be yeah. We got twelve point five nine, whatever. Uh, let's see, PVDC in three G three hot. We got three G forty two G three hot. We got PPV RTC G three hot. Fairly sure we got this one, but doesn't hurt to check. And that's uh, where are you? Your way up here. Somewhere around here. Okay, we're seeming to be a little bit unstable there. God damn, I can't keep my... I don't want to short things either. Okay, well that's unstable, so that's we've got a hint of what's going on. So why would RTC G3 Hop be oscillating like that? Now I'm just going to go back to a previous rail, like, um, let's see, 3V42, and see if that's oscillating. It should be off this one here, we should be able to pick up 3V42. It seems pretty rock steady. Alright, so we've got a problem with the RTC. Okay. Finally, got a bit of a hint. We'll just disconnect that. Let's measure our diode mode on that line. Now usually, when you've got something oscillating like that, it can often mean that there's a short further up. Go in diet mode. Yep. Okay, so let's see what we've got. 0.44. Just making sure that that is that. 448. Now let's check on our reference board. Which has a very nice, clean looking G3 hot area. Uh, RTC. Or for five. Alright, so that's okay. So, we're going to see what powers. What's being powered by the um, RTC G3 hot. So, we've got 12 parts on that line. Now, the line itself is okay. So, it's probably going to be a chip or something. I guess the question is, is it generating it poorly, or is it um, being pulled down? Okay, what's U2800? Oh, of course, U2800 is the RTC chip. U1800 is the big one. RTC reset. So, there could be a fault, perhaps, with the RTC chip. Maybe, yeah, I don't know if it'd be pulling it down that hard, but no, we'll keep looking. What else? Uh, well, our potential culprits are 2810, C2810 here. If there's a problem there, then it could be unstable power. Or it could be U2800 itself. I'm not really sure exactly at this point. Let's have a look at that cap. I mean, the cap actually looks pretty good. Not that that means anything. And like I said, we don't. Yeah, tough call. 
We are getting clock output on that. Let's check out all the rails feeding into that chip just in case. Maybe I missed something. I've got no problem changing the chip, but it'd be nice not to have to, if, particularly if we don't have to. And if I... No, I put the right one. Okay, I don't see no... So we should see 3D42 on pin 13. Which is this one up here. We do. And then we should see 3v3 on pin 2. So on here. Oops, you guys can't see that. This here should be 3v3. And, oops, I'm shorting that out. And it keeps slipping. Yeah, I'm definitely not slipping there, and it's all over the place. Okay, that is not stable at all. 3v3s5. I don't know how I missed that one on my rails checking. So I'm probably going to be more inclined to blame 3v3s5 than I am the RTC at this point. Your diet mode. Oh one three. That's actually probably feeling a little low, a little shorty. Could be wrong, but it does feel shorty. Yeah, it should be 144. Whereas this one here is most definitely not 144. Let's try it again just to verify. And there we go, it's up to 140. Oh, great. Oh, great. Um, it generates 3v3s5. 3VS5 is you generate a TPS5125, which is U7200. That's this fellow here. Can't really say I see anything overly suspicious there. It's not really in the area that was damaged either. Yeah, this is going to be fun. And a lot of things run off that 3v3s5. So. Alright, if it's pulsing all over the place, now this is where it probably would have helped if I have a MagSafe with um, the power supply connected. I could actually see if we have an excessive current drain or not, but since we don't have that, what I'm going to do is run it, put some alcohol on here and see if we notice any pulsing. Power supply would have been a much better way of doing this. But work with what we got.
What we're looking for is a pulsating heat source. It usually shows up with alcohol as a level of turbulence that won't settle down. Now I've got to find all the places that 3v3s5 show up. And believe me, that's a lot of places. I'll show you what I mean. So all of these are potential candidates. And that's just on that side. Now given that our damage was mostly all around this portion of the board, maybe we should start looking around here and well the bias there could actually be a culprit too. Infrared camera might have been helpful about now. Okay, this area did get messed up a little bit, so it's possible. Mm, we do have a couple of 3VS5s here. Fed by you. Bang on. T t wait a second. Oh, I see you taking a dive there. Hmm, something's resetting. We've got a heartbeat audio circuit. I don't know if you can see that, but I certainly did. You can see it there. See the heartbeat? And that big cap in the middle. Let's give it some effect. Halloween special. Enough fun with that. <laughs> this is not that uncommon. Now, let's see. Let's switch over to what that cap is. Let's have bring it up. Alright, so that sits on that one there, is it? Make sure I got it right. Yep, that's that one there. 
6213, 10 microfarad, 6 volt 3, it's a pretty big one, 603 size. So it's sitting on 53S3. So if that's shorted out, that will certainly bring down everything and stop it from coming up properly. So we give it the old diode test. And we've got a dead short. Nah, best if I switch over. Got diode test. Now we had dead short. Now you compare to something else like this. So, so there we go. So let's say if we replace that, we should be good to go. That said, I think everything else that we've done also was probably needed. Even if it was at a preventative level. Now we know it's this cap, well, it should be this cap because that's where the heat's been generated. I mean, if you measured the diode mode anywhere else on that line, you would have also got a short, but you wouldn't have known which part on that line was a short. But because this, di uh, this capacitor was beating, that was the indication that we had a fault. Let's have a look at that capacitor and See if we can see any indications that it has failed. Sometimes they have a crack in them. Come on. Uh, yeah, there we are. You can see there. And that was on the underside. Punch through. Looks like a minion that's had a bad day. Kind of curious why it sometimes worked and sometimes didn't. It certainly didn't work well enough. Or maybe it was just a case of sometimes the things like the SMC reset or the stability detector sort of said, no, not good enough, we're not coming up. Alright, 10 microfarad, 603, 6.3. Pretty sure we got those as a general rule. Mm. Ten microfarad, twenty-five volt. That's a little bit over the top. Not quite so keen on using that because when you increase the voltage capability of the cap, you are um, sacrificing sorry just looking at other things in the moment yeah when you do that you're sacrificing things like the I mean I am not oh, there's no way your 603 is no your 1206 is Oh wow. Alright. Looks like I better make an order for a few of those. I'm disinclined to go with the 25 volt. 
because the ESR rating on that would probably be fairly low compared to what I want. So what we're going to do is we're going to go find one of these parts. Okay, so find a part. 10 microfarad. 603. And I think it was 6.3 volts. Search. Now we'll get a fair number of them. It is a comparatively common part. But just doing it this way makes it easier for me to find it in a hurry. Rather than going through the schematic and digging around. Let's see what I've got. I've got another I've got a 3115 and I've got a 2936. Which I should check to see if they even had the part. Who knows, maybe I haven't used all of them all up. Oh look at that. That one's still got one. Oh well. I'd be curious to see you. This is the 2936. Looks like we've got a whole bunch of them. So, C161E. Big bunch of them there. C161. C161. There we are. Well, we've got plenty of spares on any given board. But we're going to take this one, since it's right here, right now. That is the upside of having plenty of donors on hand. You don't have to search for anything. You can just grab exactly what you need from the same place without having to know anything about it. I should check to see that this part... Actually, I should also check to see that the network is no longer a short. I mean, I'm fairly sure that would be the case, but... Okay, you're good. I have no idea how my multimeter got down on the ground. I find that slightly distressing. Seems my multimeter software is in the mood to crash tonight. The software itself is not crashing, it's the Bluetooth interface. It's not, you know, so there we go, 1.1, so we're definitely no longer a short. This one certainly took a bit longer than I expected. Oops. What is going on there? Look at that, that solder will not... That was refusing to go down onto that pad. That is weird. Let's try that again. Okay. The problem there is just the different alloys of the solder. And the one on the capacitor really just didn't feel like wetting to the leaded solder. I mean, you normally expect it to a degree, but you don't expect it to be that strong. 
Oh, I see you on the other side of Yeah, it's particularly reluctant. Alright. That's where having the new parts is quite nice. Yeah, now let's double check to make sure we don't have that short back, just in case that part we put on there was a dud. Point three eight eight three nine. Let's compare that to a known working board. With a nice fresh looking layout. Four forty, it's not super close, but it's probably fine. Okay, let's go for a fan spin, hopefully. Come on, fan spin. Should we grab the right one? Did I grab the right one? Yep. Yeah. Oh, there we go, we've got fan spin. Great. Alright, we'll stick it back into the chassis just to make sure. Because there's probably other issues if I'm not careful. So it'll be good to know for sure that it's running. Down a piece of paper so we don't scratch up the case. I mean, these may be old machines, but there's still no reason not to treat them appropriately. I will say these are a bit of a tad of a pain to get back in. You almost always have one cable somewhere like that one that gets snared. Our speaker in so we can get our bong. Turn off our fume extractor so we can hear ourselves think. Okay, you're connected. Let's see, we don't need Wi Fi. I don't know if which would have hard drive. do wish Apple had uh, made these keyboard and trackpad connectors a little less uh, frustrating to get back in. Alright, we're good. Obviously, we're not expecting anything more than an initial folder icon. Okay, fan spinning up. Uh, the screen has not energized. Uh, what else is wrong? I swear I saw... I hope I didn't, but I almost swear I saw smoke coming up then. Actually, what the hell? We have got here the uh, A1278, the 2936 board that we had the beating heart capacitor on. Now, we cleared that up. We still couldn't get a boot properly, it was driving me mad. I walked away from it, and then around about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, I went at it again, I was measuring everything, and running all over the board, and I just couldn't make sense of it. And then I realised I picked up the wrong DC inboard. 
So that's twice in a week that I've been trolled by a DC inboard. Since I put the right one on, it booted, it was fine. So in the end it really was, that beating heart capacitor was the last step that we had to do. Now I don't know if the SMC genuinely was faulty or not, as in in terms of its ball connections, but I am glad that we cleaned it up, fixed up a couple of those traces down the bottom there with the veers. So now I can put this machine back into use and feel confident about uh, its longevity. So that, that's pretty much it. I'll put it back together and uh, we'll confirm that it boots. Green light. Chime, screen. All right. And we do have a boot. See the activity up there. So we're all good. So there you go. Another heartbeat capacitor. That was a little tricky to find. Probably didn't help that I was half asleep. But we're all good and running again. So this machine should last for another few years. Probably change over to a solid state drive or something in the future. And it'll last even longer. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.